Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. We are in a new week and I know that God has great things he has planned for us. And how do I know? Like I always tell you, because he has given his word. Praise God. Now, when I prepare for this broadcast and I, I go before the Lord, I say, Lord, what, what direction are we going? And then the Lord says, okay, this is, these are the things I wanted to share on. And, and, and sometimes, you know, even when he tells you that, when we start, he begins to take us into dimensions, praise God. But when that word comes, I know God has great plans for you. So expect miracles this week. Yes. See, you are never alone. And that's why you must expect miracles every day. You are, you are never alone. God did not leave you comfortless. Jesus assured us. That he will never leave us comfortless. He said he will come to us. And then he has sent the Holy Spirit to us. So the Holy Spirit is with us. So in Hebrews when he says for he has said I will never leave you nor forsake you. He meant that. Praise God. He put his name on that statement. You can go to the bank with it. He's with you. And because he's with you, you can never go under. You can never be put to shame. And that's why in the same spirit and faith, I want us to make demand for our daily bread today. Are you ready? Join me right now and say, Father, I demand from heaven my daily bread. It's coming to me right now. And I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Hey, God have given us his name. And we've been talking all month about the knowledge of God. Listen to me. When you begin to understand what I'm sharing with you. Now, sometimes you find people who say, oh, you know, or strong meat or uh, bones, you know, spiritual things. Listen, go for the word of God. You may not even understand it today, but don't turn it down. Don't, don't tell yourself or disqualify yourself from receiving the word of God. What you don't understand today, just keep it there and keep meditating on it and meditating on it. I assure you, the Holy Spirit is going to bring you understanding. He that seeketh will find. If you're seeking understanding, you will find understanding. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me. I want to show you something today. In John chapter 10. John chapter 10. This is so comforting. Verse 27. John chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus speaking here. Now, if you have a Bible and even um, soft copies like apps and all the bible apps you can see some have the words of jesus in red okay very good for emphasis now here it says verse 27 says my sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me take notes my sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me. Please take note of this statement made by Jesus. Number one, he says, my sheep does something. Hear my voice. And number two, he says, my sheep follow. He says, and number two, he says, and I know them. Them who? My sheep. My sheep hears my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hears my voice. I know them and they follow me. These are the characteristics of the sheep. The sheep hears the voice of the shepherd. Okay. You know, David had spoken of, of God. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. Okay. Now, Jesus here is calling us sheep. Now, of course, he's doing an analogy, but then you understand what he's talking about. My children hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. So he knows you. He speaks to you and he causes you to hear his voice. 
And because you hear his voice, of course, if he doesn't know you, he will not speak to you. So he, he makes you to hear his voice. And when you hear his voice, your response in hearing his voice is to follow him. Okay? Yes, that's what you do. You follow him. Now, he just said that. I want you to understand something. You know, you know, these days of social media, you hear all manner of stuff. You hear all kinds of things, all kinds of preaching, all kinds of, you hear the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good ones, the confused ones, the heretics, the, the whatever, you just name them. They are all, because now all you just need to do is to post something online and someone picks it up and then it goes viral and then everybody begins to hear. People get confused and people, I was talking to someone recently, I think I've shared this, you know, but not in detail. And then the person was, you know, like, we're talking about some issues happening um, in the church nation. You know what I mean by that? The church community. And so we were just discussing it and the person was like, I, I think something has to be done about all these false prophets, false teachers. Something has to be done. If we don't shut them up, they will not. And, and I said to him, I said, but we can't shut them up. We can't shut them up. No, but, but are we just going to keep quiet? And because the Lord have told me this thing before, and I was repeating it to this person I was talking to. I said, listen, it's very simple. The deceiver and the deceived, they are the same. So what's your business in it? See? The deceiver and the deceived, they are the same. So the deceiver is deceiving the deceived ones. Now, when I say the deceived ones, maybe I should put it this way, the deceivable ones, Okay. So you put yourself up for deception and then you are deceived. It's not everybody that can be deceived. Now, I was talking to this fellow and I said, okay, you, why haven't you been deceived to think all those things they are doing is right? Is it out of bias or no, no, because see, you know the truth. Okay? So you know the truth. And where did you get the truth from? Not because someone got to your side and hammered it into your head. No. There are people in the best environment where the truth is being shared. Yeah, there are people like that. And yet, you see them still walking a lie. There are people who have been exposed to real, powerful, great teachings. Yet, you find them living in a lie. I've seen people like that. I've seen people I pastored, I, 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 I mentored, you know, and then after a while, you, you, you hear or see them and then you, you're listening to them and you're wondering, did you ever listen to me? Did you ever, did I ever pastor you? What happened to you? See? So if you don't retain the word of God in your mind, and retaining the word of God in your mind has nothing to do with the preacher. As preachers, we pray that as we speak, God will retain, you know, God will cause his word to come into your heart. But the retention of God's word in your heart is your business. And if you don't retain the word of God in your mouth, in your mind, trust me, the deceiver will come and he will sweep you off your feet. Not because God, you know, you know, so, you know sometimes the idea of um, is why, why is God silent? Why? Well, he's not silent. He has already given a verdict concerning all these things. And what was his verdict? Leave them till the time of the harvest. That's what God said. You know, so that's why when you hear me say, when you hear me say things like God has not called anyone into the corrective ministry, you know, he has not. It's just your passion. You know, it looks good, but it is a great form of distraction. Yes, because what you think you're trying to correct, you will end up not doing your job. And when you don't do your job, which is to light up, you know, the place, your job is to bring forth the truth. And when you bring forth the truth, those that are of the truth will hear you and then they will come to you. Now, those that, are, those that don't love the truth, there is nothing you can do about them. They will sit under you. They will nod their head. They will shout, Rema. They will do all the gymnastics. But the, at the end of the day, you still see them walking in a lie. What do you do about them? Now, this puts such people in a place where you wonder if this scripture is fulfilled in them. 
And Jesus said, truly, you wonder, there are, there are people who have been in. There are pastors. Let me not say, let me not even give it as a spec, um, speculation. It's the truth. There are pastors who are not the sheep of Jesus Christ. Doctors of members. There are people who, who are pastors. They preach, they have congregations. Yet, they are not his sheep. So, so what, is, what is going on? You don't understand. You don't understand. Jesus still told us, you err because you don't know the scriptures, not the power of God. You see, when the children of Israel left Egypt, the Bible says a mixed multitude came up amongst them. A mixed multitude. This say some mixed people. A mixed multitude. And they were so much, they were the ones that swayed the children of Israel into sin and unbelief. Because, see, when you want to rise, and, and, and this is what happens. When you want to rise, they are the ones that choke you. And, and you go, hmm, maybe, maybe it's not as I thought. Maybe, maybe this thing I have believed, maybe it's not so. It's like when people start attacking Titan. You understand? You know, there's this mass, or there was this mass attack against Titan. You know, to the point that, to be honest with you, a few years back, I was, I was shocked as I saw some ministers even pulling their foot, pulling their, 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 I mean, they were pulling back on, on the message of Titan. It exposes a lot. I mean, that, that's, it exposed a lot because now you realize that. So you preach what you don't even understand. See? They didn't understand it. So now when there is an attack, they, they cannot, it's, it's like this. You remember when the, the seven sons of Skiba, you know, they now they saw people casting out devils in the name of Jesus, okay? And then they felt, come on, all we need to do is to cast out devils and say in the name of Jesus, come out. And then the demons will come out. I love to dramatize this this way in my mind, you know. Because the, the, the casting out of demons was so rampant in those days. The demons had to hold a meeting and say, come. We can't just be flying out every at every time we hear out, come out, go, you know, come on now, come on. Let's let's look at this thing very well. And then they, they decided let's start forming some resistance. When they say come out, we'll question them. Now that, that's what I dramatize in my mind. So the seven souls of Skiba went forth and they said, We are joining in, in the name of Jesus. Now, because they had already uh, they they had seen the practice of uh, exorcism, okay. So they, they wanted to use the same method. So they came and said, I adjure you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, to come out. And these demons, instead of flying out like they would do when others say so, they said, okay, Jesus we know, Paul we know, who are you? They had no answer. And guess what? They were disgraced. So when you teach what you don't understand, a day comes when you are questioned concerning that message. And if you lack understanding, you'll be thrown off balance. Not because you were walking in a lie, but because you didn't have understanding. And that's what happened to such preachers. Preachers who, 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 have, who have preached the gospel concerning tithing and, and all of a sudden, they, 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 they start changing mouth. They say, well... Uh, Titan is actually not in the New Testament. And so uh, we, we let's leave it at free will giving. Who told you Titan is not in the New Testament? Titan is full in the New Testament. But men, of, men that lack understanding will take the scriptures. And, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's so simple. You know, people who think they're intelligent, you can take certain scriptures and paint a certain picture. You know what you want to paint. And then you begin to paint certain scriptures. Use certain scriptures to paint that picture. And those who are ignorant to ask questions or look deep into it will just, ah, because you've, you've, you've gathered 10 scriptures on, the, on that matter to prove your point. That man knows scriptures. So he must know what he's talking about. No, sir. Your ability to quote scriptures or your ability to even know scriptures, I've said this time and time again does not mean you know the word of God. 
What matters is understanding. And understanding can never be gotten from school. It can never be gotten from a teacher. No, 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 no. Especially when it comes to the scriptures and prophecies. Nobody can give you understanding except him. Yeah. Yeah. So if there is no fellowship with him, you can't come and say, I'm a doctor because I've got PhD in theology. I, I read a lot. You can't use that to intimidate anybody. Yes, you can't. Praise God because it doesn't work that way. The people who became custodians of the truth of God after Jesus left, they didn't go to school. Now, it was so bad that they're like, how come these people knew know so much and they saw the boldness with which they were teaching and then they recognized that they had been with jesus even jesus himself they said, how come this man knows so much letters haven't never learned so they knew jesus they knew how he grew up they knew he they never went to their schools you see now school of school of the law okay or school of letters okay now they they, they knew and then you know how they will begin to ask which school did he go who was this teacher See, and then like, well, we don't know. See, because from the age of 12, he was challenging them already concerning things of the law. And, and they like, how come he knows so much? Because he was not bringing anything strange. He was not importing anything. He was showing them things from their scriptures. Like, wow. Praise God. The same thing. The scripture testified of Jesus, but Jesus was now here. The custodian of the scriptures were the ones fighting. What happened to their knowledge? So the fact that you have so much knowledge doesn't mean you have understanding of the word of God. And that's where we have to all be careful with, with the kind of attention we give to certain things. You know, especially when it comes to doctrinal issues. This thing. The simple thing about this life is that we know Jesus. And, and we know him. He's our Lord. He, he tells us what to do. Are you following what I'm saying? The people of doctrine would have stopped Peter from going to Cornelius' house. Yes, because they would have shown doctrinally that it is wrong according to the Jewish law and traditions. Because that's all they had, but they didn't understand God. So God had to intervene right there and say, Peter, no, what I have cleaned, don't call it unclean. But now you want to challenge God. You can look at that scripture and say, no, Lord, you have to tell us at the point you cleaned it. Because according to the law of Moses, this and this and this and this. And God never said Moses is wrong. You understand what I'm saying? So you see, if you don't follow God for today, if you don't understand what God is saying today, you might miss it. And that's where understanding comes from. You see? So here and there, now this scripture we just read, it says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Are you known of the Lord? He says, I know them. It's because I said earlier, because he knows you, he would speak to you. If he doesn't know you, he wouldn't speak to you. Okay. And number two, when you hear his voice, what do you do with his voice? You follow him. And so we don't follow doctrines of men. We follow Jesus. How do we follow Jesus? He said, they hear my voice. He didn't say they read the scriptures. He said they hear my voice. Scriptures are real. Scriptures are true. But a sheep of Jesus Christ hear and follows his voice. Paul makes it clear. He says, as for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? Those who are led by the Spirit of God. If you are not led by the Spirit of God, you are not the son of God. And how do you know you're led by the Spirit of God when you're led by the voice of God? Led by the Spirit of God is not led by wind. No, 
No, sir. No, sir. Led by the Spirit of God means led by the Word of God. I'm going to be showing you all these things this week. Praise God, because my time is up. Listen to me. I'm sharing these things with you to help you. And if you pay attention to them, don't just, oh, Pastor Tua is saying this. No, pay attention to them. Meditate on these things. And let the Holy Spirit open your understanding. Then you will see what he's talking about. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. I pray for you that you will have a wonderful day today. Let favor follow you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.